This week on Vietnam and I. Welcome everyone to Vietnam and I on APNC. I'm Vanessa Phan, your host. Join host Vanessa Phan as she sits down with Luc Nhân Li, the visionary CEO of Sun Life Insurance Vietnam. Discover the man behind the innovative arts and cultural direction programs that help transforming the company's client approach. Returning to Vietnam in 2005, from humble beginnings to leading Sun Life Vietnam, Luc Nhân Li shares his inspiring journey and his dreams of making life brighter under the sun. Don't miss this exclusive conversation about leadership, innovation and the future of insurance in Vietnam, right now on FBNC. Welcome everyone to Vietnam and I on FBNC. I'm Vanessa Phan, your host, and this is Mr. Luc Nhân Lee, CEO of Sun Life Vietnam. I'm Thank Vanessa. you and Luc for uh, let us have the, this views and screen today. So how do you feel today? Yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting me and I'm, I'm excited about uh, our upcoming conversation. Yeah, so today we will share about our journey. I think both you and I go to uh, many countries to work already for a long, long time. Yes. And now we go back to Vietnam. So I think on Vietnam and I, we should share our journey. Okay. So, can you tell me more about your journey? So, yeah, I have a long journey. So, born in Vietnam and left when I was about five. Wow. Uh, then grew up in Montreal, uh, in Canada, uh, the French part of Canada. And then moved to Toronto, worked in Toronto. And then uh, after that, moved to Vietnam, worked in Vietnam, then to Myanmar, and now back to Vietnam. So, that's, the, that's my journey. So in total, how many years you work in Vietnam? In that I work in Vietnam? Yeah. Uh, the first journey? The yeah, second? the first journey was at the end of 2005 until 2019. Uh, and then um, from 2021 until now. So between two of that journeys, do you feel any different in Vietnam? Oh, very different. Wow. Very di I think Vietnam has grown so much. Uh, I remember when I first came back to Vietnam at the end of 2005 in the whole company, I think there was only one employee that will go to work by car. Right? Wow. Now there are so many. Uh, so I think it has changed um, a lot. Yes. Yeah. So in this journey in Vietnam, yeah. so do you want to stay here and change in the future? Oh, so for me, I love working in Vietnam. I love working in Vietnam. But I think the more that I have moved and changed countries, I think the more I realize that, you know, it's very hard to plan ahead for a long, long time. Is it the same for you? For me, I, I find now it's very hard to plan ahead. But I, what I know is I really love working here. I think it gives me a lot of opportunity. Uh, we can create a lot, we can innovate a lot. So I think as long as you can get that, then I want to continue. So, yeah. I think life is a lot of journeys and yeah. we never know which journey will come, right? Yeah. And just experience, enjoy everything and just go with, uh, the, flow. Roll with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I want to ask that uh, for me, I also work for in other country for yeah. many years and go back to Vietnam and I feel like there is a lot of emotion in myself, I feel like I want to do many new things in Vietnam because we can see many uh, developed countries can have different life, yeah. different working styles. And uh, how about your feeling? And do you have any best need to do in Vietnam when you come back Vietnam this journey? Oh, for sure. I think for me, like the first time I came back, so I'm an, uh, an actor. So um, at that time, the profession was not very developed in Vietnam. So when I came back initially, I really wanted to see if I could contribute so that there's more young Vietnamese that will be aware of this profession, that they will uh, choose to go in, 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 uh, in this career path. And uh, so, you know, I spent time trying to create uh, some sort of an association uh, for uh, actuarial students, sharing about the career path and, and I remember like at the beginning when we would gather uh, as a profession, uh, we will only be like maybe five or ten people. Wow. But now there are like 
several hundreds when we have our gathering. Now it's in a big hotel as any other big uh, um, profession. Uh, so, so I'm very happy with that. So I think for me initially, that's what I wanted to do as my main contribution into uh, Vietnam with this uh, profession. Yeah. I see. So you, I think you have a big passion to grow up the insurance market in Vietnam, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So from your point of view, you work in Canada, Myanmar and Vietnam. So how about your overview of Vietnam insurance market? Is there many rooms for us to grow up fast or slow in the future? I think there's so much room. I think there's so much room and I think that's the reason why most of us are here in Vietnam is because there's so much opportunities. Uh, especially in the life insurance um, industry. Um, you know, we already have, like, over the years, like, the, the, the industry is about 25 years old now for the foreign insurance company here. And we have over 10 million Vietnamese that are covered, that, that, that do have the uh, insurance coverage. So that's a big, big number. Of course, the whole population is 100 million. So that means there's 94 million people that are um, ready and, and soon to have the, the coverage. So a lot of opportunities. Oh, no, I see. So can you give me a quick compare between Vietnam and Myanmar? Is that different in, in the way we think about insurance? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, so when I went to Myanmar, it was very new. Um, the life insurance industry in, in Myanmar was there like the 1960s and uh, stopped until 2019. That's when uh, the foreign insurance companies started coming back into Myanmar. The government gave uh, the license to the foreign company to come in to operate. So it was almost like a whole new beginning for Myanmar in 2019. Whereas for us, it was similar, but in uh, 1999 that's when all the phone company came in so you see it's about what uh, 20 years different uh, uh, but I think with Myanmar um, Myanmar was able to learn a lot from uh, what Vietnam has done in the insurance industry so the years that I was there I think it grew very quickly I think it's still far from where Vietnam is right now, but it has grown very, very quickly. I see, I see. So, I feel like in Vietnam, even me, yeah. Vietnamese, and my friends and family, we, we, most of us haven't had the positive thinking about insurance. Okay. Honestly. Yeah. So, in compared to Canada, how they change the way people think about insurance? And is there any suggestion for Vietnam market that we can change our model yes. view? So I think for me, in in Canada, I feel like everyone it's all already a given that you understand the importance of insurance. So um, you don't really need to explain. So I yes. think yeah, Agreed. most people will feel at a certain age, uh, a certain stage of your life, you're like okay. I, you must I, do it. You must do it. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like a given. Yeah. I think for Vietnam, I think we need to have more exposure to it, uh, to understand uh, the importance of it. Um, like, like for me, in terms of personal experience. So, let's say my parents when they moved to Canada, uh, you know, financially it was very challenging for my parents. Uh, there were three of us: my brother, my sister. So it was very tough for my parents to. Uh, feel comfortable that they could take care of us. So my mom right away went out and bought a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. um, and that nice. life ins ins insurance policy is still with us. Like it's still 40 something years old now. Uh, so you do realize that when you need this financial security, you need to have a life insurance policy. Uh, and even in Vietnam now, I think a lot of people are seeing it. Uh, like mm -hmm. I've, I've been, there have been moments where I actually, uh, there was a client that mm -hmm. had a life insurance policy and um, her husband passed away a, a, a few weeks before that. And I personally went 
uh, but with the client and say, oh, with your policy, uh, you have a coverage of this amount. And I could see her reaction because it was very tough for her. Her, her husband just passed away. He was sick for one year. Uh, and so, she, of course, he couldn't work. She couldn't work because she had to take care of her. So financially, it was very challenging for for her. And the day that I met her, um, she was selling her house because she was having financial issue. Uh, she had to move further away in a smaller house. But when we came, uh, we we said, "Look, you have a policy, and this is the coverage you have." So, so it feel released. Exactly. So it's it's saving her financially. That's and I think that's the role of life insurance. And I think the more people can see that, uh, the more people will will see it in the same way as in Canada that it is a given. You know, when we were younger, like let's say your parents uh, or even your grandparents, they will have this large family, right? Like I, I know, like my parents used to live like in a big house with like my aunts, my uncle, my great. So you have a big family to support you. So in many ways, that's your insurance. You have your big family to take care of you, right? But nowadays, most of us are living with two, a couple, or uh, with one kid, or two maximum in, in a house. So it's no longer, no longer the concept of the big family that will give you the protection. There, there is a new concept, yeah. I can tell you. My experience. Yeah. For example, I am the main financing for my family, support parent and brother, sister, something like that. So I will think there is the, the moment in my life I start to think, what if I have got sick and I um, cannot earn much money like yeah. that? So I think about, is there any, any solution for that? And that is the moment I think about insurance. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In, in case we have a lot of res responsibility in family, yeah. we need to think about that. Yeah. And that is number one. And number two, I start to think about insurance when I go traveling a lot. And I love adventures. So it's dangerous and high risk, right? Yeah. So I think about insurance. What if I just go traveling a lot and um, there is an accident? Yeah. So I need it. Yeah. So I think. Um, it will come. They will change the, the way of thinking, right? And they can change after they, they finish in the much low level. We, they need the basic need and then they think about something else. Yeah. But I don't know. I think actually life insurance is part of the basic needs, right? Yeah. It's because, because like like I told you, when, when my parents went to Canada, they were, it was very tough financially for us. So we barely had enough money to pay rent, food, and clothing. But my mom went out and got a life insurance policy. So for her, it was part of the basic needs. It's not a luxury. It's something that you need to make sure that you are secure in your, in, in your life. I see. In, in Maslow, then level one is basic need, and yeah. level three is safety. Yes. I think insurance on that to save on the basic need in life and we feel secure in the future. Yeah. Don't worry anymore, right? It's definitely one of the first two levels. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I yeah. see. But I'm like you too. Now when I travel, I do the same. You know when you buy your yeah. your, your your flight ticket, I always take ticket. Let me get it just to be safe, you yeah. know? Uh, Even the percentage we the minor minor percentage, but I think it have still yeah. have. And you feel so much better after once you have it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that is really important in life. But maybe we need time. Yeah. Vietnam market need more time. Yeah. So uh, about the uh, based on the different in different country, the way people think about insurance and culture is different. Yeah. So is that affect your way of manage your company like some life? Yeah, I think you really always have to adapt to the market, the country, the way people look at, at uh, the financial industry, uh, you adapt to it. Um, I think for, for me, like, uh, there are things that are very common in all markets, uh, but you do adapt to, let's say, Vietnam, and even 
uh, Vietnam, like from north, central, south, there are differences. Yes, yeah, different. It's not one model that will fit for everyone. So when you go to a market like Myanmar, it, you you all you also adjust a little bit for 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 the market. So how about some life? I saw a lot of campaign about art. For example, we have the this bay today. Yeah. This bay for art gallery, right? Yes. Yeah. So this space, what we do is um, uh, once a month, we will we will um, have an exhibition here. So the the key thing for us, what we wanted to do initially was to create a platform for art and culture, uh, and it's um, a platform for artists so that they can shine. Uh, because I think we need more spaces for them to to shine. So we we that was the goal, just to create a space for artists to shine, and and we hopefully we shine one artist per month here, and it is uh, it is free for for everyone to come. Wow, it's free! <laughs> it's free for everyone to come. We want to make it we want to make it very accessible, uh, because for for us at Sun Life we say life's brighter under the sun. Um, so for us. How do you make your life brighter? So yeah, for sure you gotta be healthy. You gotta be financially secure or protected. But we need more than that to make your life brighter under the sun, right? So so for us, I think with arts and culture, it make your life brighter. So we want to bring that to all Vietnamese uh, in Vietnam, make everyone's life brighter. Yeah. So is that the tip to <laughs> make everyone? change the way they think about life and also change the way they think about how to secure it and about insurance, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so here the exhibition, we always want to do um, something that's creative, that's innovative, um, a bit independent. Uh, but when you come, what we want people to get out of it is they will question things about life about uh, the meaning of life. Uh, when is it enough? Uh, what makes you happy? Uh, what makes you blue? So so always there's a, uh, a question uh, that hopefully... It would... The initial idea about yes, everything yes, yes. about life. And make people more inspired and... Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, to make their life brighter. Back to that day I live in Mango. Yeah. There's a lot of art museum there. Yeah. And in the weekend day, they go to art museum every week. They have different decoration. So, on people in Thailand, they think about life. The most important thing is happiness. Yeah. Ha before happiness, we have to be secure about life, financial. Same as what you just said. Yeah. Uh, so I think in Vietnam, we haven't had many chance, many place, organization to build something like this. So. Uh, I think I feel admired and feel so thankful. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think that's what we want to do. Is just create more of these spaces, mm -hmm. uh, and I think there will be many many more platforms for arts and culture in in Vietnam. Like just in the past few years, uh, uh, you you can see there's an energy, there's a there's a need, there's a desire for places spaces like this. So I'm very happy that. Uh, we can have a space like this and to meet so many Vietnamese artists and I find like they're so talented mm -hmm. uh, and, and very uh, creative, very innovative. So uh, we're very lucky. I think Vietnam, we have so many talents. I see. Uh, okay. I think I will tell all my friends that it's free. So you just come and just, enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just come and enjoy it. And we have another space. The other space um, we call it S space. And what we do is um, uh, one Friday per month, we uh, project a movie, uh, uh, usually a, uh, a Vietnamese movie. Uh, and then we invite either the film director or the actor to come and talk about that, that movie. So once more, it's the same thing. It's just creating uh, a platform for us to showcase like beautiful movies that were made in Vietnam uh, for everyone to see. Mm, cool. So I think that will impact a lot. Even right now, not many people know it, but in the future when they start to think about is there any other thing to enjoy, not club, bar, coffee,
drinking. So what else? They yeah. will start to think about that. <laughs> just create more options. Yes, yes, agree. And uh, I just know that Sunlight also have some program to educate for the children about financial management. Yeah. So is that is that also one key point that Sunlight will bring the life secure for them, teach them how to solve it and how to prepare for it? Yeah, I think it's easier <laughs> if you start from the beginning. So I think we've done a, a few campaign now with uh, young kids, like nine, ten years old, so that they start being conscious about it from, from now. So then in, in 10 years time for them, it's a given. Like, like you were saying, how do we make sure that everyone understand what life insurance is? So this year what we're doing is a financial literacy campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes just like explaining to, to everyone all the basic terminology of life insurance, like what is a premium, right? Uh, like how many years do you pay it for? Like so doing short clip, like just one minute, one minute and a half clips that just talks about all these very basic terminology of life insurance. So so that everyone understands what life insurance is and what it's not. So it, it's very, very clear. Then people can 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 see the the role that life insurance can play in their life. I think it's really important because right now young generation, uh, even even my generation or Gen Z, yeah. they the way they think about financial management is not really the right way. Yeah. They they just think about monthly payment. Okay. <laughs> they don't have any uh, plan for future saving, something like that. Yeah. So I think we need to carefully think about that or else in working style, we all were aggressive for money yeah. right now in Vietnam. Yeah. In compared to Thailand, you know what? When I uh, work in Thailand and Vietnam, I compare. One staff in Vietnam can really move forward for money much yeah. more than Thailand. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's really a little bit aggressive. Uh -huh. So I think it's the way that we feel like less happy. Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Uh... <laughs> But I think it depends on what you define as happiness. Maybe chasing after something, that's yeah. their happiness. I, I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but, I'm curious, but I'm curious to see how, how do you plan your financial, like, like your savings, your uh, investments, or how, how do you... M myself? Yeah. Me yeah, myself? Yeah. <laughs> like, Actually, my mindset more about business. Yeah. Myself. Mm. So I, for example, I think about my personal cost every yeah. month. I will create a revenue change for that. So make sure that that revenue change will really stable to yeah. cover the cost. And I have another need for travel experience. So I have another revenue change. But that for me because I have many business yeah. and many and revenue flow. And how about for flow. the future? How do you how do you plan for the future? Actually, honestly, right now, just saving yeah. and invest, saving and investment. For example, right now, I still think like if I have a bulk of money, yeah. I, I buy land or real okay. estate, yeah. so yeah. save more money. Yeah. But I think I'm, right now, I'm on the state of changing that. I need to separate one part for insurance because there is, there is a, the space, there is the, the, the case that even the total money of my uh, real estate still not cover one risk. For example, I just said that I go adventure, so it's yeah. a big risk. So I think I'm changing. So my generation is changing the mindset, not really just focus on saving, but we think about some risk that exactly even a lot of money can so cannot solve. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why you got to do the investment and you got to have the life insurance for the big risk. Yes, yes, yes. For example, sick or yeah. that, yeah. honestly. <laughs> but you're almost there. You have your savings, you have your investment already. So now you're just missing one portion. Yeah. yeah. But by the way, I want to ask, it's really hard for someone like me when start to think about insurance and start to learn about it before we buy anything we need to have enough knowledge about it. We chose between this insurance company, other insurance company. It's hard for us right now to start to understand. Yeah. We just 
we just met on the cellular, so it's really tough for us to yeah. understand. Yeah, so that's why we're doing the campaign, the financial literacy campaign, is we want to make sure that the basic knowledge of life insurance is there, so that when you go through that, you understand, okay, that's what it is. And then when you are meeting with someone that will present to you a, a life insurance product, you will understand it better. Um, so is, is there any program for the age like me, not young kid? <laughs> Because you're still very young. <laughs> no, okay. so I think you're like the perfect age, right, for, for, for life insurance. And and the products in Vietnam that that are um, available are very flexible because it they were designed in a way where because we knew that the economy um, uh, and um, the Vietnamese are changing a lot. Like, you know, we were talking about how things were in 2005 versus now it has changed so much. So the life insurance products are a whole life product. So it has to be flexible enough to follow you uh, at this stage versus in 10 years or 20 years. We have different campaigns for different age, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. I think after we talk a lot about experience and even I am one of potential clients, yeah. you may see a lot of challenge in Vietnam to change the mindset. So uh, how do you feel like in your journey of career path, yeah. your challenge in the future in Vietnam to bring your passion and make your dream come true or something like that. Yes. Do you feel any challenging? I, I think there's always challenges. Uh, I think I think same thing for you. Like I think you work in many markets. Every time you go into market you there will be challenges. But I think the more that you do, the more you realize that's just part of your career, that's just part of your job, that's just part of life to have challenges and I think that's why it's interesting is because you have challenges and then you overcome them but you find solution that's that's where the inspiration comes, the motivation and so for me I welcome the challenges and, and I accept that, that's, that's normal so for me in Vietnam it's just every day what we try to do is just to make it so that everyone can see what it is, how it can play a key role in everyone's life. And and you can do it directly or you can do it that they indirectly so it doesn't have to be one way. Mm, I see. So can can you share one of your experience in Vietnam when you come back here? Yeah. The, the most memorable so for me, it's it's coming back and being able to do things that I wouldn't be able to do with any other markets. Yeah, like for me, like this space. Uh, I see. <laughs> yeah, to be able to create a space like this, I think it had to be in Vietnam uh, in order for me to be able to do it. And having a whole team of the right talent to be able to execute it. Like three years ago when we came to this space, it was a seafood restaurant. Right, uh, but now we were able to convert it into uh, an art space, a, uh, a totally a, different vibe. Totally different vibe. There's an F and B. There's a, a villa here where we do um, all the transactions for our customers. So it's so inspiring to me. Uh, and to be able to do things like this, I think for me, it's 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 a gift. It's a blessing. Wow, most. I see. Oh. <laughs> so it is the most memorable moment when you see everything change already, right? Exactly. So far, so far. I hope in the future there will be even uh, better things. But so far, I think that's 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 what it is. How about you? What, what's your best uh, memories? Oh, actually, when I uh, uh, go came back to Vietnam, people are really objective oriented. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that is the most important thing. Is I go networking, go to the event, they will think about is there any win-win thing we can do together or else it's really hard for them to make friends okay. in Vietnam. That is the, the most important thing I feel and it's hard to uh, motivate Vietnam staff. Yeah. So it's really difficult for me. So it changed a lot. My way of console the company to grow and it changed the way I I manage my team. Is that change the way you manage your team? And I, I know that insurance market, staff move between insurance companies really fast. The retention is not high. So how do you face that? I think for me is, I think if we're able to do things that 
they cannot get anywhere else. That's when people are inspired and stay with the company. The, you know, like, like even for us, like with our sales staff, like we don't just train on um, sales skills or uh, our product knowledge, but we also train uh, about art and culture. So, you know, once a month we'll train who are the most important movie director in the world and in Vietnam, the most important writer. So I think when you can give things like that, then I think uh, you can inspire them to to stay with, with the company. So for me, it's always about bringing something that um, they cannot get somewhere else. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. I do the same thing. Yeah. I, uh, I think you and I have the same way of thinking in manage the team. Like uh, we give them experience. Yeah. More experience. Yeah. Not only benefit. Yeah. But uh, for my company, I try to teach them yeah. how to become same as me. Got get get all of my spirit, my all of my team and framework. Just yeah. get it and make it yourself. Yeah. So that and is. Do you find it, it, it? Does it work? It's really work. Yeah. I have a team for a long time, and and now I start to to change the mindset of all the leaders. Okay. Uh, back for a long, long time, they just based on feeling. They decide everything based on feeling. Yeah. But now they need to start to learn how to make it quantitative. Okay. So it's easier for other people understand them. The, the biggest gap between the leaders and the, the staff is that they, they don't understand each other. Mm. Don't understand the way of thinking of the boss, right? So I try to... But usually the boss is so nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> They just don't know how to explain it. <laughs> they just don't know how. Yeah, uh, I think in Vietnam right now, everything changing. The way we do business change. We start to think and do in a new way already. So there's, we have the bright future. Do you think so? I think very, very bright. And I think I'm very, very excited because sometimes when, to, you, when you want to think about the future, sometimes you just look back. You look back at the last 10 years, how things have changed, how things have evolved. It's much better. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just shows because sometimes when we live in the present, we don't realize how things have changed. But when you look back 10 years ago, where you were, where Vietnam was 10 years ago, then you can see, oh, it has changed a lot. So then it gives you a lot of hope for the next 10 years. Good. Thank you. The last but not the least, yeah. uh, the audience of this show is a lot of foreigners come to Vietnam to work and yeah. even relocate their family here. Yeah. So can you see? Uh, can you share some tips that people can uh, easier and faster to enjoy the life in Vietnam and get success in Vietnam? Can you share it to the audience? Yeah. So for me, I think I I move. Um, I work in many many markets. Uh, and I think now looking back, I think if I were to do it again, uh, the tips that I will give is number one, uh, I would always tell myself it's going to be very, very hard going into this new market. And I, I noticed that every time that I do that, it's actually not as hard as I expected and I feel much, much better. Uh, there are many times when I said, oh, it's going to be easy then it was much, much harder. But every time I say it's going to be hard, manage expectation, then it's going to be much, much easier. Uh, and, and I think number two is challenges that we're going to get because we're going to have challenges when we get into a new market. That's part of the Got new you. journey. Uh, be prepared for the challenges and then um, you will welcome the challenges. And number three for me will be meet as many people as possible uh, when we, you get into a new market you meet people you connect there will be doors that will open for us and um, that's that's where you can start creating and innovating and probably the last thing is really just enjoy the journey because it will be an amazing journey uh, i've been to many markets and every time that i go into a market um, and when it when i move away i look back I always look at it as a, an amazing journey where I was able to grow. So, enjoy.
Thank you, Luke, for a lot of sharing today. Yeah. Thank you, Vanessa. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you all the audience. I hope that the talk show today have shared for you guys a lot of experience. The tip, how to enjoy the life in Vietnam, and also the overview about instrument market in Vietnam. If you like the content, like, share, and subscribe the talk show, the channel. Thank you. See you again. <laughs>